All right, so first of all, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. We're really excited to continue to teach this class, Carrie, Cliff, and Rupshika and I. Uh, we'll go over a little bit of introductions just so you know who we are and feel comfortable reaching out to us. And we'll give you a little overview of what we're gonna cover in this class and hopefully get our up and running a little bit of background to help you do that and, and feel like you're set up for success. Okay, so before we start, uh, I do want to do a quick poll to kind of see how everyone is feeling. I know we're probably all over the place in terms of, you know, our experience with programming, our experience with statistics. So let's go ahead and see how we're feeling. All right, awesome. So I do want to share uh, the results just so you get a sense of who you're taking class with and, and who will be able to help you learn. So most of us feel uh, at least pretty good, uh, either brand new or maybe have used something like Stata or SAS or something like that before. So this is pretty common. Um, it, you know, if you are that one person that's a little scared, uh, don't worry, we'll be able to help you out and uh, create that community where you can can reach out for questions. Okay. Excellent. All right, so I thought we'd start off with some introductions. You can learn a little bit about us, the instructors, and a little bit about our background. So uh, I'll let Carrie take it away for, for her bio here. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm Carrie. I actually mostly work at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center with Ava, actually. Uh, but we both also still teach at Johns Hopkins, um, associated with the Baltimore, uh, Department of Biostatistics, um, where we used to work. Um, my background's in biomedical sciences more generally, so I've done lots of research in imaging genomics, trying to integrate various types of data together, um, and now I focus on uh, helping other people get into data science, particularly scientists. Um, and so you can find out more about me at my website if you're interested, and uh, the dog in the photo is named Acorn, in case you're interested. <laughs> Acorn is precious. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Carrie. All right. Uh, this is me. I'm Ava Hoffman. I, like Carrie said, we work at Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center primarily, uh, where I'm a staff scientist, uh, but still an associate with Johns Hopkins in the biostats department. Uh, so my background is actually in ecology. Uh, I did genomics of non-model organisms and uh, just loved getting into programming while I was doing my graduate work. And since then, I've worked for a consulting firm doing data science and also worked on outreach and education for genomics and programming. So something that really excites me um, and want to figure out how to make things easier, more fun and less painful for y'all. All right, I'll turn it over to Cliff. Hi, everyone. I'm Cliff McKee. I'm a research associate in the Department of Epidemiology, uh, the Infectious Disease Dynamics Group. Um, I have, my background is in ecology, and I did do research on emerging viruses in, in bats. Um, so I work in Bangladesh and trying to understand spillover of, of viruses and all other sorts of bugs um, into humans. Um, I've worked with R for probably a dozen years now, um, since undergrad, um, and I just love it. It's endlessly fascinating. Um, I love writing code and making nice figures. Um, so I just want to be an evangelist for you and <laughs> share as much as I can. Great. Thanks, Cliff. Okay. So we're not going to start off with too much bad news, but we don't want to um, give anyone the wrong impression that programming can be really challenging to learn. So the learning curve in this class, it can be very intense and sometimes overwhelming. You know, imagine you're going to a new country and you have to learn the language all in two weeks, right? It's going to be tough. Um, so to kind of counter that, we recommend just fully embracing the chaos, fully diving in and minimizing those other commitments this uh, next two weeks where you can, so you can get the most out of it. And 
you know, on top of all of that, we really want you to succeed. Our goal is to make sure that you have the tools you, you, uh, you need to kind of start off on your R journey. Um, it's not our goal that anyone does poorly in the class. We really want you to be equipped with those tools and, uh, you know, for it to be a good experience. But with that said, it can be challenging. So let's start off a little bit talking just, you know, what is R? R is a language and an environment for statistical computing and graphics developed several decades ago at this point, um, but primarily started as a statistical uh, language. It is the open source, so that's freely available to download. You don't have to pay for it. It's the open source implementation of the S language, which was developed by Bell Laboratories in the 70s. So there's this rich history that goes uh, along with R. And so the idea really behind all of this was to turn ideas into software quickly and faithfully. Tell the computer what you want uh, and be able to actually make actions on them. Okay, so the R name doesn't just come from uh, being a letter close to S in the alphabet, which is how I started off thinking about it. Uh, it's actually by the, uh, the first names of the creators who, who developed R. Um, and as I said, it's both open source and open development, which means it's freely available for folks to contribute to. It's freely available to download. We don't want a cost or paywall to be a barrier to anyone to use R. And why R? So hopefully you've, uh, you know, heard a little bit about it before you signed up for this class. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons we think it's really useful as a language for your research or for your analysis. Uh, so first and foremost, it's free, right? It's not going to be a really expensive package of software that you have to have a license, you have to renew every year. Really anyone from a student, uh, anyone with a, either, even a tablet or a laptop can, can use it. Uh, it's a high level language designed for statistical computing. So it has tons of capabilities, but it's also not so uh, nitty gritty that you have to know every single uh, command and, and uh, interaction with the computer, right? So there's some, that, some information that's assumed um, and it's a little bit more intuitive to read than some other languages. It's powerful and it's flexible, especially for some of the things we're going to do in this class, including data wrangling, processing your data, getting it in shape to work with, and especially visualization. So um, in, in my time using several programming languages, everyone swears by R for that great visualization, that publication ready uh, uh, data analysis and visualization. And then finally, uh, the two things I think are really fantastic is that you can add on basically anything you could imagine via add-on packages. So you get a set of functions and, and information when you install R, but you can really grow that by bringing in outside, um, outside information from other developers. And we'll talk more about that throughout the class. And then finally, R has such a fantastic, strong community of supporters. Uh, there is a group called R Ladies that's in many cities throughout the US, and they serve to kind of make R accessible for folks who've normally been excluded from data science and, and statistics. Um, so they're very, very welcoming um, and uh, really just love to spread the word about R and statistics and data science. And you don't have to be a lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could be, you could be anyone. Yeah, so, you, you know, um, any kind of identity you have, but it's, yeah, we started off as this kind of supportive community uh, that has since grown beyond, beyond the original goal. Okay, so <laughs> why not R? Um, so given that R is so distributed that really anyone can work on it and anyone can be a developer, there's little, little centralized support. There's not really a hotline you can call and be like, okay, I'm kind of struggling with this thing. Uh, there really isn't that centralized service that you might have with um, something like ArcGIS or, or something like that. Um, R periodically updates a couple times a year, and this can be a little annoying. Um, you know, I know we uh, have updates on our computer operating systems, and that can kind of be uh, irritating as well. Um, our things start to kind of um, not always work together as smoothly as you're updating things. This can 
we can totally get around this, but sometimes it's uh, a little frustrating. And then finally, R can be in some cases, if you're developing a really intense large scale software that's going to um, you know, be really scalable, R can be a little bit slower and more memory intensive than your more traditional programming languages like C or, or Python. So, uh, but for most of my purposes working in genomics, I work with really large data um, and, and R is perfectly fine for a lot of that. Okay, so a uh, very important link uh, that we've pinned in the Slack channel and we can drop here in the chat once more, uh, materials. So everything you'll need to download from the slides, the activities to resources, the syllabus, all of this stuff is gonna be on our website, uh, jhudatascience.org slash intro to R and everything is lowercase uh, and because Carrie and I are really just trying to kind of make the class, um, Carrie, Cliff and I, trying to make the class um, continuously improved, we may make some updates at the last minute. So hopefully that's not too, too uh, annoying for you, but please go ahead and download the materials right before class, just because uh, sometimes some uh, folks will want more clarification on some things and we'll go ahead and add that to the next class, if that makes sense. So you can see the website here. I'm going to go ahead and just click it. Um, and uh, we've got our home page, just a little information uh, about when the class is. And um, we've got our syllabus tab. So you can kind of scroll through this. We'll talk a little bit more about this in just a moment. Materials, definitely really important. Uh, so um, and again, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a bit, resources, and of course, troubleshooting if you have an error, and it's a really common one, we try to keep these here for you to refer to. Okay, so that's our, uh, that's our website. All right, our learning objectives, what do we really want to get out of this class? So we want to understand basic programming. So we'll start kind of uh, with the basics of R and kind of working with this language. We want to be able to read data in. Working with toy data is, is fine, right? But eventually we want you to be able to work with your own data. I'm sure that's probably more fun for you too. Um, so working on reading data into R, which can be a little tricky. We'll work on recoding, manipulating, and cleaning data. These are essential parts of any analysis or data science in general. We'll talk about add-on packages. What, you know, what is this? Uh, but we'll talk more about that soon. We'll work on making exploratory plots, just kind of getting an idea of what's going on with your data. And then we'll work on creating some really nice plots. So you can make kind of basic things, but also really kind of publication-ready figures. We'll work a little bit on basic statistical tests. This could be a class in and of itself. Uh, so we're only gonna cover the tip of the iceberg, but kind of give you the launch pad to do your own analyses in R. And then finally, writing your own functions. So uh, working on kind of a fundamental tenet of computer science and programming is being able to create your own um, verbs, basically in, in programming. So we'll get to that a little bit toward the end. All right, what's our course format? Uh, so we'll have a lecture with slides, but largely we wanna to try to keep this interactive. Uh, we'll go over things in a slide format, just so you have something to refer back to, and then we'll kind of work through it in R where we can. And hands-on, super essential, we'll have labs and practical experience for any of the hands-on, you know, in the weeds programming. Uh, because this class can be pretty intense and a lot of information, we'll try to make sure we have two 10 minute breaks each day. The timing will vary just a little bit, um, just depending on, um, you know, if we get some questions on certain things and things like that. Um, we have class every day this week, so the 12th through the 16th, and then the following Tuesday through Friday. So we do not have class next Monday. It can be nice to have a three-day weekend just to digest and um, you know we're recognizing Juneteenth as well and then 
toward the end of the class, we're going to focus more on a final project where you do an analysis that is meaningful to you or gives you a chance to practice a lot of the things that you've learned. Okay, and then finally, the nitty gritty of grading. Um, so really, uh, we want you to be engaged, to uh, ask questions, to uh, feel like you can you can watch and see what's going on and, and do it on your end as well. So being here is really important. And it's not just, you know, so we can give you a grade, it's so that you really can can be immersed in, in the material. Um, and so we know that you're all really busy. Uh, so this can be asynchronous, right? So if you, you know, have something that has come up, you know, we all have things that happen, uh, just give us a message and we'll figure out some kind of uh, way to, to make that up. Um, of course, all the lectures will be recorded um, and you can refer to those later as you need to. Homework is gonna be a pretty big chunk. So there'll be uh, the, the homework that we sent out in the welcome email, but also two problem sets. Um, and I'll point those out really quickly on the site, on the materials tab, scroll down just a little bit, and you can see the homework uh, two problem set and the homework three problem set. And uh, you'll notice that you see some keys here, right? And this is because we don't want anyone to feel uh, stressed that you know you, you made a super minor mistake and are getting points deducted. These are for you to check your work. Um, that being said, it's going to be a much better learning experience to kind of try to work through, have some of those struggles, and then check your work before submitting it. So if anyone has questions about that, happy to happy to answer. And then finally, the final project is really a series of. Uh, a lot of the steps that we took throughout the class, data cleaning, wrangling, and making visualizations. Uh, it just gives you a chance to practice on some of your own data, maybe that is interesting to you, or to go find a fun data set that you're, you're excited about. Everything for the class is due June 30th, so you have a little bit of extra time uh, post-class to work on all of that, but um, I always say, you know, work on it while it's fresh. Um, and if you want a little bit of feedback earlier, we can certainly give that. Anybody taking this class, uh, not for credit, if you're just, um, you know, taking it, auditing it, um, but you want feedback, please feel free to turn in those assignments for feedback. So you're not obligated to turn anything in, but you can if you're, you're uh, interested to hear what we have to say. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the past, uh, we've had uh, a little bit of feedback that working with a monitor that's a little bit larger or maybe two screens really helps the, the whole process. So it allows you to follow along with Zoom while you have your R Studio or your R code up and running. Uh, you may also have the Slack open. Um, so we recommend trying to work on a little bit larger screen if you can. So if you have some uh, an office to work in where you have a larger setup, that might help you a little bit. All right. So we mentioned in the welcome email, we'd like you to install the latest version of R. And this is called Already Tomorrow. It's updated as of April 21st. And you can click through the link here. This will take you to the uh, the R website where you can download the newest version. And if you have used R before and you have an earlier version, it is nice for us all to be on the same release just in case things have changed. So uh, please go ahead and do that. Um, we'll work through at the end of this uh, class today uh, any issues with installation. Um, but you can find more detailed instructions on how to do this on the website. You'll also need to install RStudio. So if you just install R, you are bringing in R and, and kind of a, a very bare bones interface for doing R programming. But we think that RStudio can make that experience a little bit more seamless. And it's a, what we call an IDE or an integrated development environment and just makes things a little easier to work with. So. Um, we'll be working in our studio in this class, and we uh, would ask you to download that as well. 
And we're going to talk a little bit more about our studio in the in the next lecture. Okay, so uh, throughout this course, it'll involve moving files around on your computer, downloading things from the website. Um, we know that computers can be tricky if you're used to, you know, dealing with patients uh, in the majority of your work, or you know, you do other kind of, uh, you know, non-download uh, related practice in your day-to-day -day work. Um, so if it's kind of fuzzy where things are downloaded to on your computer, we have some resources you can uh, refer to here. All right, so a little bit of basic jargon that we'd like to cover before we get any further along. Um, so we do have a paper you can refer to uh, if you want to. Um, but first and foremost, uh, package. This is a word you're going to be hearing a lot. And an R package is a bundle or a package of code and possibly data, some other things that can be loaded for repeated use. You know, it's got uh, code in it that you're going to use a number of times, usually for a specific purpose. And you want to share it with other people. So packages, you could think of them like a software application, you know, like Microsoft Word or WhatsApp or something like that. Your operating system uh, uses it. And you have, like having R installed allows you to use those packages. So it's like a, an add-on or an expansion pack or, or something like that. OK, so that's package. You're also going to hear this word function a lot. And so a function is a piece of code that does something. It allows you to do something in R. You can write your own, or you can use functions that somebody else has created that come directly from R or use have come with an add-on package that you've installed. And when it all boils down to it, I like to think of a function as a verb in R. It does something. Okay. It might help you add numbers together. It might help you create a plot, uh, or it might help you organize your data. But we'll keep talking about that uh, this throughout the class. And so uh, there's a little bit of code down here. And uh, don't worry if this is like just the formatting is a little, we're, we're getting used to it. But here I have a function called sum that is doing something. OK? And we'll, we'll talk more about this throughout the class. OK, inside your functions, you have something called an argument. And this is going to tell the function or the verb what exactly to do. So in that previous example, we said, OK, well, sum is a function that we're using. We have to tell it what to sum, right? We have to tell it how to work. So here, sum has two arguments. It has a 1, and it has this uh, 20,234. Uh, so these are arguments that are passed to this function. And they can be other, uh, you know, tons and tons of different options that you have. So another example, it's how you want this function to work. We've got an argument down here called digits. And it's telling a, a function called round how we want that rounding to work. OK, so. Long story short, arguments change how a function works. And so we'll talk lots and lots about arguments throughout the class. And then finally, uh, we have object. So we, we talked about verbs, how they work uh, for, for our functions. But an object is something that can be thought of like a noun. An object is something that can be worked on or in, uh, in R. And they can be tons and tons of different, different things. So you could have a matrix of numbers, you know, almost like a spreadsheet. You could have a plot. You could have a function. Actually, this is a little confusing. The function itself is an object. Uh, you could have data. You could have uh, just one variable, a number, uh, lots of options. But you could think of that as a noun. OK, and let's backtrack just a little and think about our data that we may be working in, in or working with in R. So 
usually when we think about data, we think about something like a spreadsheet. Um, so how do we, what, what words do we want to use to actually define what we're talking about here? So a variable is something that is measured or counted and is a characteristic of a sample. So typically this is going to be something like temperature, length, count, color, category, are columns in our data. And this is in contrast to a sample, which is going to be individuals or observations that we have data about. And usually these are individual rows of data. So something like a people, a patient ID, houses, viruses, anything like that. And here we have different observations of flowers. So flowers one through six for our rows and then different metrics to kind of measure how the flower looks in our columns. All right, uh, so as I was just saying, our sample is what we like to think of as a row, and our column is what we like to think of as, or our variables, what we like to think of as column. And when we have data that looks like this, or information that looks like this, uh, this is often called a data frame in R. We'll work a little bit with fancier versions of data frames. They just, they're very similar, but they have a little extra flavor on top. Um, we'll talk more about that soon. Uh, these are called tibbles. Okay, kind of like tables, but fancy. <laughs> okay, so when you download R, it has a built-in base set of functions and packages, and we often refer to this as base R. Okay. As I mentioned, we can install additional packages, almost like our, our expansion packs, from resources uh, such as CRAN or from GitHub. And these packages are written either by um, established developers at companies, or they could be people like me and Carrie and Cliff. So they could be really anybody. Um, and there are specialized packages that can be downloaded from a resource called Bioconductor. This is usually for biological or, or genomic science. Important to note that not all packages available online are trustworthy. So remember, R is completely open source. Really, anybody can do this stuff. So generally a good idea to um, talk to somebody who's worked with R before. Is this a package that I can trust? Uh, it's important to kind of uh, have your, um, your, your spidey sense about you when installing packages. The company called Posit makes many useful packages. You can uh, find some of those there. We're going to be working with a lot of them in this class. Okay, so base R. It's what comes when you install R from scratch. But there's another set of packages and tools that are really kind of fundamental to R called the tidyverse. And I'd like you to think of these as kind of like two dialects of working in R, uh, tidyverse versus base R. We're mostly going to show you how to use tidyverse packages and functions. And this is a newer set of packages. It's really designed with data science in mind and not, you know, really fundamental software development in mind. It can make your code a little bit more intuitive as compared to the original version uh, or original base R. So you may see code from colleagues that's in base R. We want to equip you to be able to understand it, but um, we do think it's generally a little less intuitive. Um, so if you've worked in something like SQL, uh, I, I think uh, Tidyverse is a little bit more intuitive. Uh, so there's some advantages. It's consistently structured, it makes it a little easier to learn how to use the different packages. They all work together pretty well. It's great for wrangling, manipulating, and cleaning data in a nice, compact, and concise way. And it's a little bit more flexible for visualizing data. Um, so you can make those, again, those really beautiful visualizations. All of these packages in the Tidyverse are managed by a team of respected data scientists at Posit, so we don't have to worry about whether they're trustworthy or not. Um, and you can see more, more info from them here. But again, yeah, two dialects, you may encounter both, especially if you're Googling or using ChatGPT or you know those kind of things. 
All right, uh, package installation. We'll go through this in the lab here in just a little bit um, when we talk about our studio. Um, but installation does differ a little bit depending on where you're installing the package from. So um, whether you're just installing it from CRAN, from GitHub, uh, et cetera. And installation must be done once for each version or release of R that you have. So once you've installed it, usually you're pretty good to go. How do we install stuff? And again, this is just for reference later. We'll have a moment to practice this in the lab. But uh, you can install packages from CRAN using the tool menu in RStudio. So go to Tools and Install Packages, and then type in the name of the package you want to install. All right, so I'll go ahead and show us real quick. So hopefully everyone can see my RStudio. All right, so I have a tools menu here. And the very first thing I can see is install packages. All right, and uh, I want to install from a resource CRAN. And let's say I want to install a package called dplyr. OK, it should usually pre-populate with the package that you want. Uh, just be careful you're not spelling things wrong um, and uh, create, you know, uh, not able to find something for that reason. OK, so pretty straightforward. We can do that from from the menu here. All right, we can also install things via code and we'll talk more about how this fits in with our code here in a moment, but um, you can refer to this uh, a little bit later. Um, but usually what this looks like is a function called install packages and you have the name of the package in quotation marks. All right, so this differs from loading packages. And this is a very uh, kind of nitpicky discrepancy, but will be very important as we work through the class. So after installing packages, you know, we were good to go for most of what we need to do. After installing them, we'll need to load them into memory. So uh, we every time we start R, we have to tell it, OK, I want you to use this expansion. I want you to use these functions because R doesn't want to bog you down with everything you've ever installed. So you do have to prompt it every time you start your R session up. And that's OK. You can stick it up in your code, forget about it, and just run it any time you open your, your code. So. We'll use a function called library to load packages. So you'll see this lots and lots throughout the class. And we use, uh, so as I said, it's a function. And uh, we've got the function here. We have parentheses and the name of the package we want to load inside those parentheses. Unlike the installation, the quotation marks are optional here. And again, I know this is a lot of detail, but we'll uh, talk more about it while we practice. OK, so quick summary. Installing, usually good to go once per R version. We can do that pretty quick and on the fly because it doesn't need to be done multiple times. And it looks like this. It's got the install packages. It usually has the quotes. Loading package, every R session, usually we want to stick it on top of our code because we know we're going to need to do it again. And it's going to say library and then some of the package names. OK. All right, so after going down that tangent, uh, we want to point you toward uh, other resources that will be at your disposal as we work through the class. Uh, so we have a resources tab on our website. It's going to have cheat sheets. So um, we've got cheat sheets from different days of the class can help you kind of review everything that we talked about. And let's see. Um, specific kind of topics here. And if you're thinking you're like, I got this, I am loving R, I want to move ahead. We have tons of awesome resources, including a book that Carrie wrote about tidyverse skills for data science. Um, there's also a lot of great online resources and, uh, and courses that have been designed. Okay, um, and then uh, if you've worked in other languages, there are 
add-on packages you can learn about um, that kind of help you work with those. And then finally, um, if you want to check out the previous um, sessions, videos, uh, they're all on YouTube, so you should be able to find those and, and watch them if you want to. Okay, so I mentioned lots of great resources for you, and um, you know we're of the mindset that this should be uh, free and pretty accessible, so most of these, if not all of them, are freely available. You don't have to pay anything to, to use them. Um, again, our terminology and then working, um, kind of translating between R and Stata, um, there's tons of great resources if um, any of these apply to you or you think you might um, want to look into them further. Okay, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about reproducibility here in a moment, but we do also have some courses that specialize in this, especially for cancer biology. Um, so if these are topics that interest you, please do check them out. Okay, um, so I do want to summarize really quickly uh, that, you know, R is a powerful language for uh, an environment for data visualization and analysis. You can do so much in R with add-on packages like Tidyverse, uh, which is a set of packages. Um, especially that one can help make R more intuitive. Functions perform specific tasks in R and are found within packages or within the installation of R that you have. Our arguments within functions specify how to uh, perform a function. Objects uh, like nouns are data, variables, or some kind of um, uh, tangible object in R. We'll be both installing and loading packages, so that discrepancy will come up uh, periodically. And R materials are, we try to update that as frequently as we can, so there's going to be lots of these surveys available to you, um, and again I think we're using Google, uh, Google Forms for that. And this is really a great opportunity for you to provide feedback. Like, was something confusing? Did you think, oh, I, re I really like that? Can we talk more about that? Um, this is your class, so uh, we, we want to hear what you think. And of course, there's lots of resources that can be found on the website. So with that, um, I want to do a quick tour um, in just a little bit more detail of the website. Um, so our syllabus is here. This should cover pretty much anything related to grading or dates or um, anything like that. The only thing on, not on here is the Zoom link, just we're not supposed to distribute that, um, you know, publicly. Um, and a little bit about us, uh, the formats, our objectives, all that good stuff. Uh, but in preparation for the class, the materials and schedule, I think, are going to be essential. So scrolling down a little bit, uh, you can see uh, the day one recap. You're going to see all of the slides, all of the code used, and you can download that and kind of get situated prior to the class. Um, and especially all the slides are here. And when we get to our lab sections, you're going to want to uh, download the lab here. OK, and so what does that actually look like? So I uh, you can see it prompted a download for me. I'm in Chrome. You might be using a different browser. Um, OK, and if I bring my downloads over here, um, you can see it downloaded this RStudio lab. I'll go ahead and open that and it should open in RStudio, provided you have everything installed. Okay. 